Happy New Year. It is, uh, seems like a year. Your crown in heaven. Uh, it, it, I, I, I don't want to pad the numbers, but it was a, it was a great small group uh, of people, and uh, it was wonderful to have you with us as we uh, cel- oh, thank you as we celebrated uh, Christmas Day. Uh, it, it, it was uh, it was special because while well, we celebrate all family birthdays with pancakes, so we had pancakes for Jesus. Uh, before we came to service, and after we <laughs> went back, we sort of looked at each other and said, eh, we're going to take a nap. Then we opened the stockings, then we had Shandos come over, and then we kind of did our thing. But it was, uh, uh, it was nice to be able to just to take the time and to worship, and it was, uh, uh, I, it, it was a good service. Anyway, Happy New Year. It is good to have you with us on the first day of 2020. Three, and uh, it's going to take a while for all of us to figure out how to uh, uh, make sure we don't. Uh, who signs checks, anyways, these days? But it always used to be on checks. So you'd always mess up for the first two months. But uh, my hope is is that you had a good New Year's, you had a good Christmas, and it is good that you are with us. We have uh, a couple of announcements which are in your bulletin, and. Uh, it's going to be complicated this week because everything's white, uh, but the, there are some announcements and we just wanted to mention that uh, there's a note from the Stewardship Committee talking about uh, those who might have mailed in offerings. Uh, it is going to take a bit of time for things to be processed over the holidays given our uh, mailbox situation and whatnot. And uh, so just be patient if you s- did in fact write a check for 2022. Uh, we also need help after church next Sunday. We will be undecorating the sanctuary. So the beautiful Christmas, uh, we're, we're celebrating the 12 days of Christmas with the decorations. Uh, but as soon as next Sunday comes around, we'd love to have some help after the service. Uh, Susan is over here. There you go. Uh, you can talk to her if you have any questions. And we uh, hope that a number of hands will make uh, light work. We need. We need tall people and short people. So it, er, you, you guys have it. Yes, thank you, Ian and Susan. But the point is, is we still need a lot of help. Uh, also, as we continue to try and uh, re, uh, emerge from uh, COVID as, and the closed, being closed down, uh, we are looking for help with uh, the Coffee Fellowship. And there's a notice in the bulletin regarding that. Uh, we also want to offer our condolences to uh, Pat Hughes on the death of her sister late in December, and also uh, Fred Swackhammer, whose daughter passed away uh, before Christmas. Uh, we didn't get a chance to mention that during the services over the holidays. As we uh, prepare to worship, Simpson, do we have people online? Yay. Thank you, Catherine. Health, and health, peace, and kindness back to you and yours. Happy New Year, Sita. Good morning, Ann. Happy New Year. James. Good morning. Happy New Year. Good morning, Janet. Happy New Year. Well, good morning, Jim and Sally. Happy New Year to you as well, and thank you for your well wishes, and we hope that you were safe with the storm and that you had a good Christmas. That's it. Well, okay. They're sleeping. People are sleeping. Yes. Yes, I know a few of those people. As we uh, enter into this new year, we enter into the season of Epiphany, 
And as we gather to worship, uh, we light the Christ candle so that the light of Christ's presence can be with us and with you at home as we gather to worship God together. Let us take a moment in silent prayer as we prepare for our service. Amen. Friends, as a community committed to loving God by loving our neighbors, to learning together to know God's love through worship and study, let us put our faith into action by loving and caring for each other, using God's gifts to go forth to bring others to Christ. As brothers and sisters bound by love, the love that comes from God, we have much to be thankful as we enter into this new year. Arise, shine, says Isaiah, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Nations shall come to your light, and the rulers to the brightness of your rising. Let us, as we gather, gather to worship the Lord of hosts, the King of kings, and the God of our salvation. Let us pray using the litany for epiphany that is found on the inside, inside white sheet of paper. The litany for epiphany. And let us pray responsibly. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Alleluia. With joy, let us pray to our Savior, the Son of God, who came, became one of us, saying, O Christ, let your gospel shine in every place. Where the word of life is not yet received, draw the whole, the whole creation to yourself, that your salvation may be known through all the earth. O oh Christ, Savior and Lord, extend your church to every place. Make it a place of welcome for people of every race and tongue. O oh Christ, ruler of rulers, direct the work and thoughts of the leaders of nations that they may seek justice and further peace and freedom for all. O oh Christ, master of all, support the weak and comfort the rise and, uh, and comfort and raise the fallen. Strengthen the tempted and raise the fallen. Watch over the lonely and those in danger. Give hope to the desperate and sustain those in their despair. O oh Christ, Light made manifest as the true light of God, gladden our hearts on the joyful morning of your glory. Call us by our name on the great day of, our, of your coming and give us grace to offer all the hosts of heaven an ending praise to God in whom all things find their ending, now and forever. Amen. Let us join together in singing hymn number 170, What Star Is This? Hymn 170.
Jésus ressuscite. Friends, as we uh, continue with our worship, our time of reconciliation or time of confession offers us an opportunity to right our relationship with God and to recognize that sin has indeed stained our lives. For if we think we have no sin in us, we deceive ourselves. As we confront a world of darkness and sin, we are called to remember the promises of God as told by Isaiah. For darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will appear over you. As sojourners following the light of Christ's star, let us with bold, uh, boldness and confidence cast the light of God's grace on the darkness of our sins by confessing our sins. First, in the unison prayer of confession printed in the bulletin, then in the silent language of our hearts. <coughs> Let us pray together. Epiphany God, we praise you through your Holy Spirit. You sent Jesus among us to reveal your love for all people. In your image, you created us to serve and glorify you, yet we often fail to live in the light of your righteousness. Forgive us, we pray, for hiding in the darkness of this world Judge us with mercy, we pray, and extend your grace to us. Renew our faithfulness to you, our neighbors, your creation. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our light. Amen. Friends in Christ, hear and believe the good news. In Christ, God says to us, arise, shine, for your light is come. In Christ, God says to us, love one another as I have loved you. In Christ, God says to us, your sins have been forgiven. The good news of the gospel is this. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Thanks be to God for the gift of our salvation. For in the name of Jesus, your sins, our sins, have been forgiven. And we have been set free to live a new life in a new year in him. Amen. I invite Simpson to come forward and help with our reading. Good morning. Happy New Year. Good morning. Uh, please join me in saying the prayer of illumination. God of Epiphany, we long to hear your word in fresh new ways. Open our ears to your call, our eyes to the dawning of your new day, and fill us with anticipation for your coming. Amen. Now, this is my first time reading this ever because <laughs> I was just told to do it. So. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. It was their first time too. Exactly. First reading is Matthew, and I've forgotten how to say them, so 2 1 12. Uh, in the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observe his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, sorry, Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. 
Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Am I saying it? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Am I saying the other one? Nope. Okay. You're done. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Don't encourage her. A um, <laughs> couple of things. Uh, reading it for the first time, uh, it, it's nice to hear when someone else reads it because you do hear it a little differently. Two things pop out immediately, which we're not going to get into, but just bear uh, mentioning two things. One is, is the timing of this visit, of this trip. Uh, right in the middle of the text, uh, Herod calls the wise men and learn from them the exact time when the star had appeared. So we, we have right in that sentence a, a, an acknowledgement to the passing of time. That the, uh, the birth that happened in our calendar last week is now somewhere in the distant past for the wise men, the three sages from the east, uh, who are most likely astronomers, uh, for them to observe the star, to collect themselves, and then to gather and go, and then arrive. And they didn't just hop on a plane, and they didn't just go straight to Jerusalem, and they didn't, didn't just go straight from there to Herod, and all of this happened like that. This would have taken a significant period of time. A piece of information that helps make sense to what happens after this text, which we won't be getting into because the lectionary had it last w somewhere between Christmas and today, which is the slaughter of anyone under two. So two years of age. So we have, a, we have this weird little thing about time. So just to give, give you that piece of information, because we don't really know when this happened. Uh, and the second thing is right in the last sentence. This is also thematically very interesting because it says, and having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. And I was reading something as I was preparing for this uh, sermon. I was reading how uh, before Christmas we have angels. With the birth, we have angels. And I'm scratching my head, except for Revelation, where angels appear in the rest of the New Testament. From here on, we have dreams. Now, there were dreams to both, uh, there was a dream to, to Joseph and to Zechariah, but we have this dream to the wise men. And then it seems as if the heavens are quiet because now Jesus is on the earth. He's with us. So there's a very interesting little thing uh, which I'm going to start thinking about as we go forward with Epiphany, but they were warned by a dream uh, rather than by uh, and an angel in a dream but we don't have that giant pronouncement. All that being said, Happy New Year's again. Uh, it is interesting to be here on New Year's Day because uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure some of you are very efficient and the tree is already out the door. I remember in Charlottetown, uh, I had to do a visit to the hospital and, and I did it on Boxing Day. And on the way back, because on the way out, I was sort of driving along and thinking, oh my goodness, you know, it's still full. Get there, do the visit, come back, 
already three trees were on the curb. And I'm thinking, wow, wow, they must not have gotten what they wanted for Christmas. Because um, <laughs> it was like out the door. But as we have become accustomed in our culture with the turning of the new year, it's out with the old, in with the new. Time to change the calendars. Time to change that number uh, as we start thinking. Time, as it is with all things, especially with New Year's resolutions, we're supposed to forget the bad habits or at least figure out how we're going to work on them and move forward with our resolutions. Christmas, it seems already, is so last year. Because, well, exit Joseph and Mary, the stable, the shepherds, the animals, enter now coming in from the east, <laughs> will be the three wise men. That was me thinking we're east, isn't it, that way? The three wise men. Goodbye Christmas story, incarnation, hello, different and larger story. Because all of a sudden, we have people from foreign lands, and we have Herod, and we have other things happening. Jesus the Christ, the gift of the wor and light of the world, has been born, and now the world is responding. That's where we are today. Now, today was not a, spe a stellar experience of sunrises, but uh, I have, uh, and I'm not what I would call a, a classic, pure morning person. I married a classic, pure morning person. Hello, Regan. I love you. Uh, but getting up at now 6, uh, or even earlier, so that we can get the day started. The day hasn't started when we get up. But one of the things I enjoyed on my trip, which I did now over half a lifetime ago, where I went around the world, was I enjoyed sunrises in different parts of the world. Hawaii's sunrise over the ocean was spectacular. Uh, the sunrise in, uh, in New Zealand and in Australia was interesting because I was in the Southern Hemisphere. The sunrise in India with all of the clouds, uh, the different colors as it went up, and just a giant circle. There's something spectacular about sunrises, as well as there also is something optimistic. And I think it's universal to all humans. A new day is starting. A new dawn is rising. And it's full, as every day is, of promise, of hope, of potential. It's an opportunity that ripens as the sun arcs higher and higher into the sky until it starts to go down. And in many ways, a new year is similar. As I said, we change the calendar, we turn towards the possibilities of what might unfold. A new year is, is I guess, a psychological thing that we have now in our lives that allows for anticipation and expectation, where we hope to leave behind what was bad, and these new resolutions are going to cut pounds and bad habits, and we're going to move forward, and we're going to carry all that was good. And like a new day, there is a sense that a new year has the same promise and hope and potential to be a better year, to be a change from the darkness of the past. And friends, if there's one thing that we all want to escape, it's the darkness in our lives. Poetically, night and darkness is seen as a metaphor, uh, and this is why we want to escape it. It's seen as a metaphor for deceit and deception and ultimately death. Darkness spawns fear and preys on our anxiety. Regan and I were watching something uh, last night, and I said, you know, if, so, if it wasn't for the darkness of this scene and the eerie music that they were playing, walking down that corridor would not be a problem because we've all done it. We've walked down dark corridors, and 
got to the other end without someone jumping out or some big mishap. Unless, of course, you start playing that soundtrack in your head and you start freaking out. But the point is, is darkness preys upon us and uh, on our anxieties, and it makes us vulnerable to things unseen, things that are not real, things that are imagined. It's a time of despair and desperation, a time when most crimes w- are committed, most suicides are attempted, most violence is perpetrated. As darkness comes, that's when it usually happens. And those suffering from depression, and I know people who do suffer uh, and refer to their illness, especially as it gets darker with the seasons or darker at night, as a dark night that they must endure. Allegorically, night or darkness implies the lack of enlightenment, obviously, the lack of vision or wisdom. Hence, as historians have called it, the Dark Ages. I'm sure some things good happened then, but for the most part, no. Biblically, though, darkness is a void devoid of God. That's what they're talking about when they talk about darkness. And it's little wonder that uh, the second creative act uh, it, uh, of God would be to bring light to a now forming world. Which is why on Christmas Eve, we heard uh, how in the John reading, God sent his light into the world to bring about a restoration of our ruptured relationship with God, to show us the light so that we would not be afraid and know that we are not alone. As Christians, we believe that Jesus came into a world darkened by sin and death to shine as a radiant light of hope. Just like a sun, he casts off light that pierces the darkness that engulfs it. And today, on Epiphany Sunday, we heard the predictions and the accounts of God. Uh, in our reading, we have the predictions and the accounts of God's light uh, rising like the sun as truth as enlightenment and as salvation. Not just for a few, but for the whole of God's creation. One of the most stunning and world-changing photographs was the blue earth rising, uh, moonrise of the earth taken from space. And it showed how the light of the sun was hitting, you could see the part of the earth that was darkened out, you could see the part that had the sunlight on it. And theologically, uh, well, just from a human point of view, just realizing the power of that sun to illuminate what is on earth, that picture changed a lot of people's understanding of who we are and what God's light can do. As I mentioned, and they are in the reading, in our uh, lectionary, the Isaiah reading, I, in that reading, Isaiah foretold a bright light, and we've already heard it in the lectionary as I've got, uh, the, the liturgy as I've prayed, a bright light that would guide the world out of darkness, which is clearly a foretelling of the gospel reading from Matthew that we just heard that tells of a star that guided the wise men to, light, to the light of Christ. And these two texts, tell and reveal to us what Epiphany is all about. The universal manifestation of God's glorious light to a dark, lightless world. Which is interesting, because the earth does not generate its own light. It's the sun that lights the earth. Images of darkness and light dominate the Isaiah reading. It's really a poem uh, of salvation, the salvation of the people of God. Light in the Isaiah reading symbolizes life and salvation and joy, whereas darkness represents death. 
The theme of the arrival of light is stated in the first verse and repeated again uh, against the background of darkness. In the third verse, nations are told that they now will see the light and will come to Jerusalem's light. And the appearance of light is the same, uh, is the same uh, uh, as the arrival and all together this will provide the glory and reveal the glory of God, the glory of the Lord. Of note is that the glory or the Lord himself has risen and will arise according to Isaiah. It foretells of the second coming. But more typically, the accounts of the appearance of the Lord in imagery speaks of him coming down. There's a big debate about whether this talks about heaven being up there or being all around us, which we won't go into, but the idea is, is that light came to be with us. That's the key takeaway. And the metaphor here is clearly of the rising sun, but the text is clear that God and God alone will be our everlasting light. The light of God's presence will shine on Jerusalem. And from there, the light will shine out and attract and draw out the peoples of the world from their darkness. That's the promise. That's what the wise men were following. And that's what we got in the Matthew reading, the arrival of the wise men. And it builds upon the promises from the Isaiah text, yet separates itself from the Luke birth narrative by pushing the incarnation um, and the story of Jesus' birth beyond the stable, out into, as I mentioned, the world. The wise men, neither named nor numbered, we said there were three because there were three gifts, and probably, as I mentioned, astrologers, represent for Matthew the fulfillment of the Isaiah text which prophesizes the arrival of the nations of the world. They went to Jerusalem because that's what the prophet had said where the light would be. That's where it would be. It was only then that they realized it was somewhere else. This and their arrival are the, the basis of Matthew's claim that Jesus, and this is what Matthew is trying hard to do, that Jesus was indeed the royal shepherd, the true king of Israel, a descendant and heir to David's crown, and is also Christ to the world, God with us to be worshipped by all peoples. But as we think about the dawning of this hopeful new era of salvation, with the introduction of Herod, with his jealous apprehension and anger and threats of vengeance and unspeakable violence, the Matthew account that we heard also pricks the balloon of our comfortable Christmas. The hard truth of the gospel is that the good news had and still has its enemies. Those in darkness don't want us to live in light. In this account, Christ's very incarnation, the love that God shows to us through Christ, arouses hatred and suspicion and brutality that our world is made up of that our world then and today is capable of. The implicit message of the Matthew reading is clear. It is into the darkness of uh, that world, our world, that the gift of light came to shine. And it did so because we cannot see God's glory without it. So friends, as we enter into a new year, the good news, the gospel is this, that in Jesus, God came into being as the light of all people, as the gift of light 
a light that shines in the darkness that the darkness cannot overcome. Thanks be to God for the gift of light at the dawning of this new day of this new year. Amen. It is a uh, new month, and it is the first Sunday of the new month, and we will be serving communion. I meant, and I apologize, I meant to mention before we started the service, if you do not have, uh, we will be having communion, and there were the cups, uh, which we are still using, uh, which were at both doors. I don't know if uh, they might be available for us to get some if people don't have them, uh, but we hope that you were able to get your cups. do we think we might be able to get the tray? It's on here? Okay. If you don't have a cup, please put your hand up. We'll get someone to bring one to you. In the meantime, the riches of our land far surpass the resources of the visitors, those magi from the east who came to worship the infant Jesus. As they opened their treasure chest, giving gifts to him, to the king, so too may we come into God's house offering from our own treasure. May we offer to God gifts to the Christ, the light of the world. May our offering be an expression of our wonder, of our awe, and of our love. For all we have is from God. Freely we have received gifts of grace and salvation. Freely the best is to be returned to God. And we give thanks as we do this in the form of our offering. If you, the offering plates are at both doors, the doors back there and here if you missed them on the way in. We also want to thank all of you who made your Christmas donations, those here, those at home, those who are on par and those who are using our online uh, offering options. Uh, there is, uh, you can still squeeze things in, but we hope that you have your offerings in and uh, we are grateful for all that you have given to the work and ministry of St. Andrew's. Let us hear the invitation to the table. And this is coming from uh, the Presbyterian Church's uh, affirmation of faith called Living Faith. And this is the section proclaiming our belief and our understanding in the purpose and the power of communion. In breaking bread and drinking wine, Jesus told us to remember him. In this meal, Christ offers himself to us and we present ourselves to him in worship and adoration. In this meal, Christ places his table in this world to feed and bless his people. In this meal, a joyful mystery, Jesus takes the bread and the wine and represents his, uh, to represent his atoning sacrifice, proclaiming salvation until he comes, offering them as symbols of hope. In this meal, we give thanks to God. Offering our lives to God, we celebrate his victory over death and anticipate the joyful feast we shall have in his coming kingdom. Friends, come to the table of the Lord and receive the signs of his love. Come gladly to this table, not the table of St. Andrew's, but the Lord's table, and taste and see that the Lord is good. Let us join together in him singing hymn number 600, sorry, 161, correct? Yes. yes. What child is this? <laughs> 161.
be seated. As we come to our communion celebration, let us give thanks to God with the prayer of the presentation of gifts. Let us pray. On the dawn of a new year, in the light, in the eve of your sun, your day star, what shall we offer you, O great God? Every creature offers you their thanks. The angels offer to him, the heavens, the star, the magi gifts, the shepherds, their wonder, the earth and the, the bounty of its harvest, grain and the fruit of the vine. What shall we offer you, O Christ, that can stand in your light? But our response to your coming, your birth, your grace, your love, by giving of ourselves and of your creation. God of grace, have mercy on us and make our gifts worthy in your sight. Amen. I invite you, if you are new or haven't been here for a while, the responses for the prayer of thanksgiving for communion are uh, in the inside, inside insert where it has the Happy New Year uh, uh, graphic there. And we invite you to follow along. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Bright shining God, inner light of all faithful souls, we celebrate your gifts of creation, of life, and of love. We rejoice that you made us in your image and call us to live in the light of your limitless love. You bring peoples and leaders to the dawn of your rising. You sent your only child, our morning star, to light a way in our night and to lead us to justice and peace. Your Holy Spirit shines good news into our lives. Each day break you call us to feed the hungry, bring recovery of sight, liberate the oppressed, heal the brokenhearted, bind up their wounds, and keep watch for the dawn of your commonwealth on earth. For all this, we give you thanks. And in joyful praise, we join with the voices of all creation saying, holy, holy, holy Lord, power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus, word spoken, word made manifest, the light of and to the world. We pray that you bring the light of your grace and peace to the nations of the world in darkness this day. Jesus, the Paschal Lamb, the source of life, as the true bread of life, we pray, provide in abundance your grace and love so that all may know of your sustaining presence. Jesus, the bridegroom, the body of Christ, the church, the way, the truth, and light, be with us, guide us, fill us with your light that our lives may be lived in you as we proclaim the mystery of faith, saying, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. By your spirit, we pray, bless this bread and this cup that they may be for us the presence of Christ among us. Shine your light and your love on the offerings of our lives. Enliven, enlighten us that we may be your people, the body of the risen Christ, the light of the world, set apart to serve this earth that you have made. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we praise you now and forever O oh, eternal light, as we now conclude our prayer, praying the prayer, our Lord saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, our Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, this is my body that is broken for you. Whenever you eat of this bread, you do so in remembrance of me.
the bread of heaven. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant that is uh, poured out for you in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, you do so in remembrance of me. The cup of salvation. Every time you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may consume your element. Friends, the good news is this, that he who was with God in the beginning is with us in this bread. He of whom the prophet spoke speaks to us through this cup. Through this triumphant feast, God comes and has came and has come to us so that we might come to know God together. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for your love your love revealed by your creation in and through your Son, a gift beyond our deserving, the greatest gift in the world. We thank you for your love that claimed us before we were born and that will be ours beyond this world. We thank you for your love that offers to us through this meal and its promises a foreshadow of heaven and a life in heaven. We thank you that fed and sustained and emboldened by your grace, we may now rise and turn from your table to reveal our love for you in all that we say and do to the light of your glory. Amen. Let us now join together in singing the hymn you came here today to sing, hymn 173, We Three Kings. So sing. They will. <laughs>
before you sit down and before you go, I don't know if Felicity's watching wherever she is, but if you are Felicity, and those at home and those around here, if you didn't pick up a new January 2023 newsletter fresh off the presses, they're in, in the hall, it's online, and Sandra did her job and delivered them to people's homes. There we go. I was told to say that. There, there we go. Friends, as you go out into this day, as you go out into this week, this new year, you go out to the places where you live, where you work, and where you play, may all that you say and do reflect a life transformed by your following the star, by your seeking Christ's light, so that you may indeed share the light of Christ with them in their darkness. And as we conclude, this is so that the spirit of Christ and the light of Christ can be in our world and those of you at home. And now may the love of God uphold you, the light of Christ guide you, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit fill you with joy and be with you today, now, and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.